Hello, this is Brian Purdy with the Florida Aviation Network. Today we're down in Air Venture uh, 2021 visiting with uh, Composite FX and the Mosquito Helicopter. We have Norbert Richter. Norbert Richter, that's right. And uh, he's going to show us around a little bit to the, uh, the models that they have here. So please be patient with the bouncing around and uh, uh, we'll just make sure that you get all your questions answered that we can think of. So, appreciate your time and attention. So, I know you've been here before. Are you getting the reception that you've always wanted, or is it? Well, we always need more people for the booth. Right? They're gonna, they're, you can never have enough. However, we've got three or four people manning the booth, and it's often that it's all hands on deck. So we're happy to have 20, 25 people sometimes in the booth. We're also happy to have a couple minutes of quiet. You know, so it's fun. So it's good reception. So we have four uh, man machines. And now this is the debut in Oshkosh of our, un our unmanned machine. Okay, so I'm and going to go ahead and swap this around so we can actually see some of these also. And if you want to do any narration, why? Sure. Well, what you're looking at right now is a white ship. Uh, it's I think it's number 45 or 46, something that we've uh, that we've been making. So we've been providing them for years for military contractors. Now we're starting with uh, uh, commercial contractors. And um, and it's uh, it's starting to come along. So this is our uh, this is our debut, and um, uh, and so far so it's going pretty well for us. Oh, okay, we're back this way. <laughs> yeah, because so people are right. But, so uh, it is a it's a 400 pound useful load uh, autonomous craft. It's conventionally flown with uh, mission control software. Uh, you can fly it with the Futaba. That's not why you spend that much money on a helicopter. Um, but 400 pound useful load, as long as you can keep it on CG, you're in good shape. Uh, you can fill it full of fuel and it can be on station for eight hours at a time. Um, or uh, with the standard 12 gallon tank, it could be uh, 90 minutes worth of flight. It likes to cruise at about 75, 80 miles an hour. So do you install the sensors or do they? Depends what the customer wants. Okay. Yeah, so so <laughs> each customer has different requirements. Okay. And we can give them a, uh, uh, a machine that's with an autopilot, without an autopilot, with their sensors, without their sensors. Often, uh, the, our customers have their own technical teams that, can, uh, that do all that integration because they hold that close to their chest of yeah. how they get their secret sauce. Done. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, okay, here's, your, here's your, your drone helicopter. Here's where you can put things and keep things in a, in a white red CG and you don't even need to mess with it. Right, and, and their secret sauce is their business. Yeah. We're helicopter nerds. Yeah. We, we'll build you a helicopter that happens to be computer controllable, mm -hmm. and uh, and you will go do your thing with it. So we have people with interest with agriculture, uh, others with uh, the mining industries, mm -hmm. others with power line transmission, others with commercial delivery, you know, and on and on and on. And we, we were humbled quickly because we thought we had it all figured out of who our customers would be and the stuff that's coming out of the bushes is stuff we never would have thought. It's a good thing. Yeah, it is. It's good and it's diverse and, and it's also, it shows us how early we are in the industry for having something with this kind of payload uh, uh, and to be in compliance among other things. Now, I talked with Dwight Junction, Junction, Junction and also yeah. I saw a, a YouTube video about a tour of the factory and at that time he said it's like a six to eight months back log. Now is that strictly for the That's for the man ships. Okay. That's for the man ships. However, the unmanned ships also kind of come out of the same funnel. Yeah. Um, they're in some cases they're they're a little easier to build. Uh, in other cases, uh, depends what the customer wants. So and just to make things a little bit more complex. So this is uh, Oshkosh 2021 right now. It's roughly the end of July. In a week, we're going to be on Modern Marvels, um, and that also could be a push, so that might yeah. make, make the lead times go a little bit longer. I still remember, I got a copy of the one segment from Discovery Channel years ago. Out of Canada. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. right. So. And, and when that aired, it wasn't near as many eyeballs as what this was going to be. When that aired, that was the company's best year. It was a big deal. And it was always nice to meet a fellow Floridian that's doing something so exciting. And it's always near, near home. Yeah, so good. Great. Okay. good. That's great. great. So, uh, would you like to tell us about? Yeah, this? let's well, let's go to okay. uh, let's go to this purple ship over here. Okay. So and we I, have a we have a. I'll, I'll even put this in here so you can see uh, our models. So we have a turbine in the air right now. Yeah, I, I was watching it a little bit. Yes. That you can't see, and yeah. that's where it's sitting in the yeah. booth. This is uh, uh, a model called the XE290. Mm-hmm. 
Um, it is the uh, it's the next version of what people were familiar with with the 285, and um, it is a water cooled, fuel injected, oil injected, uh, two cylinder, two stroke engine that makes about 90 shaft horsepower uh, on the output. Um, the engine is good, it's a private label engine, the engine's good for 140 horsepower, but we can never use it because it's at a higher RPM mm -hmm. than we operate. Uh, machines in general operate at 6,000 RPM, 100% constant. Uh, main rotors, 590 RPM, mm -hmm. tail rotors roughly 2,700. Yeah. Which seems to be mostly standard for helicopters. Right, helicopter. right, right. I've, and plus, plus or minus a little yeah. bit. So. And if we walk around the back of the ship, I can okay. give you an orientation on how the mechanical works. Okay, and now as we go, I'll, I'll follow you. Okay. Um, is this an improvement in payload power it's from the... the, the oh, just so a, we, it's an improvement in uh, the engine management. Oh, so okay. That, so, and the 85 used to be... Uh, 85 horsepower. Oh. Now we we're managing the engine a little bit better, and it turns out we make more. We make more. We're making about 90 horsepower. Okay. With it, so with a little better computer. So let's sneak underneath and go okay. on this side. And uh, what your viewers might be interested in is that uh, all of our ships mm -hmm. roughly are the same. They're the same composite structures. Mm -hmm. And the same control mechanisms, whether it be the ultralight or the turbine or anything yep. in between. Uh, what differentiates the models. Are from this drive shaft down, okay. this, we'll call that the engine assembly, mm -hmm. and instruments. Okay. And those are what, what make the variants that we have for the manned ships. Okay. And so uh, what we have is uh, 6,000 RPM coming out of the P vertical PTO going into a giant go-kart clutch. Mm -hmm. So it's a 100 horsepower go-kart clutch that expands at 3,000 RPM, two brake shoes, that's a drum brake, mm -hmm. that, that come out and engage. Yep. That goes to a Sprague clutch, mm -hmm. and on this Sprague clutch, this this is a freewheel clutch. So if everything goes wrong, you can see that it'll freewheel in one direction. Let's see if you, if you lose your engine and yeah. so for, for the auto rotation. rotation. Right. Yeah. Okay. And what what's most important out of this is it just takes one belt to go from 6,000 RPM to tail rotor RPM. Okay. And that's what's coming up into the machine, and we're sending it back this way mm -hmm. for tail rotor. Mm -hmm. We're also sending it up this way for tail rotor RPM and final reduction for 590 at 100%. Okay. And, uh, uh, and this one happens to have a radiator because it's okay. a water-cooled engine, uh, as well as other instrumentation. Now, the ECU that we put in this now has uh, data logging ability. Uh, it has 3D mapping for the engine guys mm -hmm. who can, you can tailor the map uh, to, to, to have totally the engine good. perform a certain okay. way. Uh, and, and then it, it, the data, long, it, data logging is a big thing. Furthermore, it's got a Bluetooth capability. So some guys are strapping a tablet to their laps and watching all kinds of other engine performance go on at the same time while they're doing that. Is that no, it's flying. auxiliary to the, the instrument on the down? That's the, right. Okay. That's right. And it can CAN bus out to uh, other devices at the same time. And potentially, time. if there's an issue that you wouldn't necessarily see, that would have recorded it. It would have recorded it, and, and maybe if there's an issue that you want to watch or whatever, you yeah. can have that front and center, okay. right? So uh, it's a water-cooled engine. Mm -hmm. It's an electric start. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this is, this is for the most part, this is our most popular model these days. Because it's, some, it's, it's kind of the most bang yeah. for your buck. It's yeah. a lot of horsepower. Mm -hmm. The ship is far from underpowered. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and it's a just, as you see here, as a factory assist, it's mm -hmm. this is roughly a $60,000, $65,000 machine. Okay out the door. Yeah. Now, with water cooled, are you having to be cautious with people that might be living far north or something like that? Or, so, no, not necessarily. No. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're running coolant, yeah. so, it's, so we don't have to worry about frost. And what's interesting is, some, so it's experimental aircraft, you can do whatever you want with yeah. your home building. Yes. A few people have plumbed the hot water into the cabin and they run it with doors and okay. they run heat. Okay. They run heat in their machines. Yeah. So uh, it's, that's not something you can buy from, from the factory. Mm -hmm. Um, but experimental aviation, you can yeah. do whatever you want. And yeah. some, some guys, uh, they don't want to not fly yeah. at Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know? So where we're standing, uh, I, I wish I could show you the turbine machine, yeah. but maybe uh, someone we'll on YouTube it. can find a, yeah. a, a video of us talking about a turbine. Uh, maybe also importantly, we can go look at this purple bird over here in the middle. Uh -huh. And we With have a cutaway that will yeah. never fly, but yeah. some of your viewers might see, like to see how the thing yeah. is put together. Yep. So, 
this cutaway bird, which is a just a show bird, we cut certain sections away so that the so a customer can see, well, how is this thing constructed? Some people are overwhelmed. I can't build a helicopter. Yeah. Well, how do you eat an elephant? It's one bite at a time. So let's talk about this assembly, and you're going to put that together. Let's talk about this assembly and put that together. And so what does it look like when it goes together? Well, you know, you can stick your hands in there. What, is yeah. the, what does a bearing carrier look like in a, in, in a tail boom? Is there a drive shaft? How does it work? How does it go? So there's nothing like seeing. And now, are the... The, the original, are the included parts so shiny, or is that just... Well, no, we dolled them up. Okay. Right. <laughs> and you can paint them pink if you wanted to at the same rate. So there's there's no point in uh, you know in shining those up. You'll never see them. Yeah. Right? Once they go in, and if they're operating right, they don't have to come out for 500 hours. Okay. Right? So uh, furthermore, it, you may be getting up on this, but here we've, we've, we've cut apart... And you can see part of the, how the collective assembly goes into the mixer. Other sections here you can see in the fuel cell, or you can see the dashboard behind the dashboard. And so you might want to um, get up here carefully and uh, have a look, have a look around without falling. Yes. And look in some of these holes okay. and kind of give a eagle eye view for some of the customers. And this would be. Engine that's the, space. That the, that's a fuel cell. Oh, okay. The fuel that's cell. That's where okay. the fuel goes. The okay. machine conventionally comes with. It's a 12-gallon tank, mm -hmm. and there's a uh, inspection portal on the back side, mm -hmm. uh, which you can see half of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, furthermore, you can one can see how the couplings go to the drive line, and how the main cartridge is in, is integrated into the composite airframe and how all of this whole system fits. So there are uh, two bolts that are missing right here, but there will be eight bolts all the way around it, basically holding the main head okay. into the composite airframe. Now I know on other pre-flights, this type of thing on a Robinson would be sort of in line, I think. Right, uh, Okay. right. So on pre-flight for this, is, is just all coming you're, from the bottom? You're, you're putting your fingers on all of it, that's why it's exposed, and okay. you want to make sure that it's tight and so on. Now, whether whether your viewers know about it, yeah. um, there's also other considerations. They might want to know where the swash plate is. And so the swash is up here, and here you can start to see how some of the mixing, uh, how, the, how the mixing goes. So we'll be happy to show anybody this at our factory when the time comes. But this is useful for us in the, in the show booth because uh, oftentimes yeah. people want to see... Uh, a little more detail, and this is our best effort at the old to mimic the old Chilton uh, auto service manuals, where you know the front page, oh, okay. yeah, the, the front, front page, the machine is cut apart so that you can get comfortable with what's inside it. Now you did mention, I was just thinking, that you mentioned the builder assist. How much time is it cut off of being able to do that? So, so that it's a, it's a, it's a general statement, um, or, or, or sometimes a difficult thing to ask. So we've had. NASCAR pit crew guys show up when everything's all set to go. We got one guy flying in 16 days, pulling collective. Awesome. We have retired accountants that have always wanted to do this, and they're not sure which end of the screwdriver to use. Right? That takes a little bit longer, but yeah. we, we, we still we're, we're we're helping you get over that 51 percent because in that 51 percent you're learning how the ship goes together, yeah. and more importantly that if something goes wrong, you're comfortable servicing it. I know how that went together. I know how to take it apart. Let's see. Let's inspect it the right way and make sure that the ship is flying right. And so the 51% is one thing. A lot of our customers take the, take their ships through 70, 80% because when they finally do their paperwork for the FAA, they find that um, uh, that it was a lot more than 51. Oh, it's and the, and the more that they learn about it, the better. That makes for safer flying. I think. Do you give them some hints as far as for what to do then a 40-hour uh, fly-off? As far as okay, how to really test it to make sure. Um, yeah, stay low. Stay low. So, so, so let your first several flights be six inches above the ground. And then your next few flights, a foot above the ground, and so on. A lot of the fun is learning how to do all the ground maneuvering, and that's where the machine has to perform, because you're always coming back to that before you're landing. And so we're, we get a little nervous when our customer wants to go up in a pattern and the machine only has two hours on it uh, because you have to shake it out. Yeah. And um, a pattern is not necessarily the place that you want to shake it out, even though the FAA still holds everybody to a 20 or 25 mile radius uh, for those 40 hours. Now, I remember Dwight saying he taught himself how to fly. Uh, what's the recommendation now? <laughs> right. It's, so um, 
So Dwight is a very skilled pilot. Um, he's smarter than the average bear, and also pretty pretty thick-headed, and so you can't tell him anything at some times, right? Yeah. So that being said, um, it's really good to have 10 hours of instruction uh, with a certified flight instructor. And people ask often, well, it's a single-seat helicopter, how do you learn how to fly it? Well, you learn in an R-22, you learn in an n or something like this with a, with, a, with a skilled pilot next to you to pull your fat out of the fire when everything goes wrong. 10 hours isn't going to make you good, but it's going to it's going to bring home the point of how quickly things can get expensive or painful or worse. And so uh, um, and so for the most part, um, when you when you the transition from an Enstrom or from a, an R22 is pretty easy as long as you do baby steps. Uh, our left front skid is the last thing to leave the ground if you're in trim, and scrub it around in the grass until you find that bubble in your butt, and then then start to move it around. Right? As opposed to yank on it, get get a meter in the air, and find out where your left foot is supposed to be. I think I saw some uh, numbers years ago as far as the operating expense of this. And it's, it's remarkably low, yeah. right? So provided that you don't do a lot of hard landings and cause maintenance issues for parts, uh, general a, a 25 hour service might set you back 50 bucks. And may either your first time you do it, it might be two hours. We at the factory, since we do it all the time, a 25 hour maintenance might take us 30 minutes, so it's usually more like 20. And uh, provided that the ship is in good shape and you can touch on everything and keep going. Uh, so, in general, TBO costs are somewhere around $15 an hour. Uh, TBO is at 500 hours, and so. Uh, so you're saving up about six thousand dollars for belts, bearings, and blades when that time comes, and that's a lot of flying before yeah. TBO for a, for a little helicopter. Uh, and then beyond that, it, it depends. If you're burning for the 290, if you're burning seven gallons of fuel an hour, which you probably won't, um, and you're built, you're burning MoGas. So three, like for easy math, twenty-one dollars an hour in fuel. Uh, we recommend a kind of high rent. Uh, two, two stroke oil. So if you throw five dollars in for a quart of that, um, you're still not approaching fifty dollars an hour for a helicopter. And what's really outrageous is the turbine. It, you can't spend seventy five dollars an hour flying a turbine. And anyone who has a two hundred six or an R sixty six or something like that, everybody knows that turbine time costs a lot more than seventy five bucks an hour. But it's great for the resident. Right. <laughs> right. Now uh, on the two stroke, um, is it? Premix it like the old stuff, or so you just got a, the a, a sm our smallest engine. You premix it okay. on the 290. It goes in a separate reservoir okay. and it's mechanically injected. Okay. So it depends which ship it is. Old Kawasaki K100. Okay, one, one tank for the gas, one tank for the oil. Right. All right. All right. Okay, great. Well, Norman, this has been a great experience. Thank you very much for My spending pleasure. the time here. Thanks for having um, me. I'm glad to see your display is full of people Great. and I'm hoping to talk more about the simulator there maybe with the developer of that uh, later on as far as a safety issue good is good concerned. in fact maybe you want to wander over there and take a look at some oh. people standing there adjacent okay. to it okay we fashioned uh, a couple weeks ago we fashioned one of our fuselages yep. and set up a, 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 a simulator with mm -hmm. X-Plane mm -hmm. and with an Oculus S mm -hmm. and it's been getting a lot of mileage I can believe from, it from the tots as well as from the grand yeah, and everything in between, and so it's it's interesting to uh, uh, to see who likes to fly, yeah. how is it, and there's been a ton of interest, and so yeah. your viewers might be interested in meeting Ben, yeah. and he can show you how uh, how that was integrated. Yep. Now, one of the biggest things for the Florida Aviation Network is safety, and that's what I was looking at. Right. Before, right. Uh, and so, for the 10 hours flight instruction that we were speaking of before. For your first hour, if you've done some simulator time, you're going to be able to better listen to the instructor yeah. and be overwhelmed with all of the things that are going on. And while the VR simulation isn't the same thing, it gives you the quick study of what you're going to be next to or, or what you're going to be doing when you're next to an instructor and spending $350 an hour. So yeah. a little simulator time yeah. makes for much greater value when you have the expert next to you trying to actually teach you how to fly, not just get you familiar with what motor skills and thinking that you need to be doing. Uh, in my past, I actually volunteered at the American Helicopter Museum up in Westchester, Pennsylvania. They've got a couple of rotorways that were just... Uh, contributed to them, or they, I don't think they crashed, but they never got to fly them, so okay. maybe a, a, a mosquito owner 
will one day think, okay, uh, I'm going to go donate it, and that would be an excellent place to put it on display. Yeah, it would. In fact, in Miami, there's a there's a museum where there is a mosquito on. on, oh, okay. on and I'm, forgive me for not remembering the name of the uh, of the museum, but there's a flamingo pink helicopter floating above the lobby, I believe, and uh, uh, it's a pleasure that uh, they had interest in having a machine uh, there. Well, like I said, that one is strictly helicopters, so uh, I don't know what I never no, This is all kinds of aviation down in Miami. Yeah. Well, we'll just put it out there, and maybe one of the other, other owners will say, you know, I need to go up there, and I'm going to contribute that. But they've got some of the early, early helicopters. Nice. Because most all of the helicopters in the U.S., their birthplace is there in the Delaware Valley. Right. Great. Well, Norbert, it's great. Once again, thank you very much. Um, Thanks for your interest, uh, and I'm glad that you're having a good time at Oshkosh 2021. I'm glad you're keeping busy and having a good time, too, despite the storms that sound worse than they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, this is Brian Purdy with the Florida Aviation Network, live and in the clear from Oshkosh and Air Adventure 2021.